Hello there listeners, today we discussed that Harry Kane has been taken off corners. Roy Hodgson has legitimately said, I mean I was going to do an intro properly Jack, but Roy Hodgson, after our last show, has literally said, Harry Kane was on corners because you know he's a good striker with the ball, which is what I joked about last time. Yeah, yeah. sad, welcome to the sad show. reality of English yeah, football. Well- Welcome to the show, everyone. This is our England exclusive, or as I like to call it, Group B special. And we've discussed every other group in a other po- in, another, in another podcast. We did a forty-five minute show discussing all of the other teams in the week previous. Uh, and th- today, I'm joined by Jack. Hi, Jack. Hello. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this. It was a good game. My voice is a little bit raspy from the pub. Yeah. It was that good? I, I, can I just say a quick thank you to my boss who let me take the well two hours off work to go to the pub in the afternoon to get drunk and watch the football what a guy uh, we should mention we should mention quickly that Kino isn't here if you've listened to the show before this you'll know that Kino's not here uh, he's in London bad internet that's his excuse I think he's just partying Jack and he doesn't want to admit to it he could go into a McDonald's and get the Wi-Fi really I've, I've lived in London there is yeah. Wi-Fi hotspots everywhere I'm not no buying commitment, it no commitment listeners no, commi- no commitment uh, don't worry JK we'll love Kino we'll be back soon uh, right then we as I say we're going to leave joking. this we're going to leave this show to be exclusively England chatter in our previous shows we did quite a lot of England chat within the main show we figured actually the best thing to do we to have a 10 20 minute chat uh, 30 minute chat 45 minute chat about England Jack, this could go on forever. I mean, that escalated quickly. That I, well, I, I think it could go on a while. But we'll I don't want to limit ourselves. So, for, as we start this three-hour bonanza, uh, let's talk about the England match against Wales. And Jack, going into the this game previously, we were feeling somewhat disheartened. We were, and I think we kind of discussed about it. And I was kind of worried going into this game that there was kind of leaks coming out of the England camp, which seems to have been a kind of common occurrence over the last few kind of international breaks about the fact Roy was going to stick with the same lineup. And I was worried. Mm. I really didn't want it. If you watch the episode where me and Ben got a little bit annoyed, we discussed the fact <laughs> that like Roy's decision making during the match was pretty poor. I felt like, in retrospect, there was players in that starting eleven that probably didn't deserve to start and shouldn't have started. And I was really hoping he was going to set the record straight. You know, a big game against Wales, point to prove, must win game. And he used the same eleven again to start with. And I don't want to mm. say I was surprised by how the game opened up. But it really did echo the Russia game, really, for the first ten or so minutes. Yeah, I, I, I think the thing came out. It was the exact same lineup, a lineup which I was pretty critical of in the opening game, and it, it's disappointing really to see Raheem Sterling play so poorly this tournament, Jack. Because I think we've seen him have a, a season where he was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So he's clearly got the ability to be fantastic. Um, but this tournament, it's just not cooking for him. You wonder actually if he'll play again. It could be as serious as that with, with the changes that they made yeah, at half-time. Well, he, had a, he had a golden chance, didn't he, in the first half, which he didn't take. I mm. feel really bad for Raheem Sterling because obviously he's had his injury this year, which kept him out for a little bit at, you know, during the late end of the season. He's a player where when he played for Liverpool, he looked so confident on the ball. Mm. And he still looks comfortable, not confident on the ball a lot of the time now. I think there might be a little bit of self-belief not quite there. But one thing he's never looked great at is being confident in front of goal. Yeah, And I kind of feel like this whole situation the fact he's playing for England the fact he had that real chance and he missed it I just wonder if it's played on him a little bit I I, I don't know what quite is wrong with him because I feel like he he gets in the right spots and there's times where he looks like he's going to make the right run but there's just not quite that end product there's not the execution there that we're so used to seeing from him Mm. I mean, well, let's let's talk about the lineup then. Would would that have been what you'd have gone with? Because it wouldn't have been my choice. Um, I feel like we established in the game against Russia that simply put play. We I talked about it before we recorded. England have this proby style of play where they like to kind of you know create triangles around the fullbacks. 
Mm. And the kind of issue for England is is that if you're going to play that style where you kind of you know you box a team in at the edge of the area, you've got to have a lot of players moving ahead of the ball, really, you know, pulling the defenders out of shape for other players to move into. And it's very one-dimensional and predictable, I feel like, with England, particularly when you get into the wide areas with Rose and Walker. They're either going to try and run down the line or they're going to pass it inside to Rooney or Deli Ali or um, who was the other centre mid today? Dyer. Dyer. And uh, it's going to go to the opposite flank. So what and it's you, as simple I'm as just, that. I'm just interested. I know it's like it's maybe easier to talk about it retrospectively, but what would you have played differently? What, how would you have set the team up for the I, game? I feel players? like there was a lot of talk about Roy playing a diamond going into this tournament. I feel like the last few friendlies perhaps threw a spanner in the works of that kind of plan possibly working. I really feel like this was a game to persevere with it, to try to up front. I was so annoyed after the first game that we just kept Kane up front because it was quite apparent that we weren't going to score from open play. I think against Russia, we had lots of the play. We did create half chances, but there was no end product there. It was a game that really screamed out for a player, um, well, like Vardy, like maybe even a uh, kind of Barkley, a Danny Sturridge, a Rashford to come on a player who scored goals this year Mm. and to kind of, you know, take the game by the horns, I guess you could say. And I felt like going into this game, I just... I wanted to see a diamond. I wanted to see maybe so Sturridge. Who should, who should have put? Yeah, I probably who Sturridge put. and Kane. There's a debate to say Sturridge and Vardy, but I feel I feel like Harry Kane offers something that perhaps Sturridge and Vardy don't quite offer in the same way in terms of his ability to perhaps hold up the play a little bit better and play with his back to goal. Mm. I feel like for Sturridge, he's capable of getting the ball at feet and then perhaps running into space. I feel like for Vardy, his main strength is basically receiving the ball already in space that he's created through his pace. Yeah. And so I feel like if you're going to play with Vardy, you've probably got to stick another player up with him. As I said, I would have loved to have seen a 4 1 2 1 2 in this game. I feel like in retrospect, so it's quite you, easy sorry, to say I'm that. Just, I'm just, yeah, I just want to get to the, the crux of it. So who would you have played where? In, um, in the back diamond, back the, four, goalkeeper the same. the same. Dyer, centre mid. I would have actually gone with Jack Wiltshire and maybe uh, Deli Alley in centre mid together. Okay, and then put Rooney just in front? No. Oh. I'd, p- I'd perhaps play Lallana I honestly think Lallana's great down the middle I feel like he had a very solid game against Wales I feel like he, he tried to make some stuff happen in what was a fairly static midfield which was underwhelming and I think a lot of that perhaps comes down to Delhi Ali's contribution yeah. in the game I, th- I think when the team wasn't particularly fluid when it wasn't moving with any sort of kind of verve um, Lallana looked good I think for our staff actually one of our better players one of our brighter players uh, in the game we really kind of touched on Sterling who had a poor first half I thought Kane Ah, it's just not clicking for Kane. I feel like you have to go into a tournament in a hot streak. And the way the season finished for Spurs, he's not quite in that hot streak. And as a striker, it's quite important. And we've got too many players to continue with Kane. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone who supports England is thinking Kane's a bad striker. I don't think anyone's writing him off completely. I think throughout his career, he's going to play a massive part in the England team. But I think when you've got players behind him like Rashford who's had a good end to the season Sturridge who when he came back from injury looked good again Vardy who scored 24 and 36 you've got players ready and I think that was the frustration with the Russia game is that we had players that were ready and not utilised and at half time you go in 1-1 I mean we'll talk about the the bail free kick before we carry on but I, I guess the point I'm making is that when you've got players behind Kane who are capable and able it's frustrating to not see them used and to not start any of them go into this game I thought was a mistake yeah. and um, regardless of the fact we won the game I was confused pre-game to why we'd kept it exactly the same we were pretty poor against Russia we didn't break them down as much as we should have done um, but looking at this game as a whole <laughs> Bale's free kick I mean I think it's a really good free kick poorly dealt with by Joe Hart I don't think it's a bad free kick poorly dealt with by, with by Joe Hart it's to given the key, I, I feel like if you looked at England's free kicks Harry Kane's free kicks Rooney's free kicks the thing you could say about Bales is he's given the keeper something to do. He's hit it hard. <laughs> he's hit it on target. I mean, that's something that England really didn't achieve in this game mm. from the set pieces they got. And I do think Joe Hart should do better. I do question why we needed players in the wall. I feel like almost if you set up a wall, the player taking the free kick almost feels like he's inclined, like he's been encouraged. And it'd be rude of him not to at least have a shot from range because that's what the keeper's expecting from him. Yeah, I think I touched on that actually with Bale's first free kick. He scored against Slovakia. I think I even said, oh, it's strange that the keeper had a wall because like, like it was what undid him, essentially. Didn't have a clear line of the ball, a uh, clear sight line to the ball, and it outfoxed him. With Joe Hart, they showed a couple of angles behind the goal, and I thought, actually, the way you've put the wall, the way you're stood, you can probably see the ball coming. It's just... I genuinely think, and a lot of people are giving Joe Hart shit for it, not as much because we won the game, but 
if he palms that round the post, nothing said about it. And I think actually, maybe eight out of ten times, Joe Hart deals with that and nothing said. I think it was just one of those moments. Hart felt a bit of the pressure, didn't grab it. I actually think Hart was trying to catch it. I don't know what you think about that. Um, I haven't seen it enough to maybe draw that conclusion. It looked like to me, and I don't think this is the case, I think your theory is probably better, but I feel like it just looked like a lack of strength. I think that's something that really people underestimate in goalkeepers is, especially with low, hard shots, you've got to be strong to you know basically get yourself behind the ball and then get it get it away to where you want to. And in, It almost looked like it was just a case of Bell hit it so hard that Joe Hart just couldn't quite you know turn it around the post to me. Yeah, I felt, I felt like Hart... I don't know if it's a bit of arrogance from Hart, but I feel like part of him was just trying to catch it, bring it down, hold it. And then he kind of halfway through realised, actually, I'm not going to be able to hold this and tries to palm it around the post. And he's caught in two minds and he ends up just putting it in there. (laughs) I I didn't appreciate the fact that when Bale was setting up the ball, Joe Hart was there smirking at him. (laughs) Yeah, I think they had a little bit of, uh, as as the kids would say these days, banter previously from a shot Bale. I mean, I I appreciate the Perlo Joe Hart banter in the World Cup, but this, like, it's led to a goal. I can't can't let it slide. It was too serious. I did think when Bale scored, though, obviously Bale talked a little bit of smack in the run-up. I thought... I literally said something that I went, that's why he talks a bit of smack, because he can smash it in from 30 yards, because he's pretty confident in his own ability. That's why you get that a lot of the England players were going, do you want to say anything about what's well? No, 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 I don't want to, don't want to get involved with that. I mean, <laughs> let's just, uh, another question, another question. Whereas Bell's like, so what do you think of England? Any of those get in your team? Nope. Okay, right, then next question. Uh, it was funny, I feel like that's such a contrast between the fact that Bell is a genuinely world-class player, and we have some people that are told they're world-class, and that's the uh, potentially Well, that's right, so one thing I heard, I think it was about Danny Rose, was uh, he was, everyone was like asking him, so Danny, Danny, you know, how how are you doing so well this year? What has Pochettino said to you? It's made your company. He's like, Pochettino tells me I'm, I'm Marcelo and I should play like Marcelo because I'm the best left back in the world. So like, I mean, we've said that to be fair. We've said that before. We've said that Danny Rose is the best left back in the world. It seems like a bit of role play, really. It's like, right, we're going to put a wig on you, Danny. You become Marcelo. I mean, Carl, if, if, Carl, if, if I, I mean, to be honest, if Danny Rose is Marcelo, Carl Walker. He's Cafu reincarnated because he had another man of the match performance. I thought in this game he gets, uh, you know, those, you, you know, you can get those masks where you can like become someone quickly. It's like oh, did it become Shaggy out of Scooby Doo or become one of the Flintstones. I think Danny Rose, but Pochettino's handed him sort of the Bima on Fellaini kit, and he's just, <laughs> he's just popped on the popped on the hair and gone. All right, go on then, be Marcelo, just shooting from distance doing roulettes. So it'd be magnificent. Um, but no, okay. So the bell cricket goes in. We feel a little bit like. Well, Deja vu. Shit. Yeah, Deja we don't. Vu. We don't. I think my first thought was, we don't have anyone that can do that. So, what are we going to do? I think part of my fear as well, Jack, was that he might do that again. <laughs> what do we do? I feel, I feel like at the end of the first half, I just kind of sighed in the pub. I was watching it. I just went, it's very Spursy. Yeah, I guess what we can say though is that it's better for it to have happened when it did than for it to happen in like the 80th minute yeah that's true and you can't do anything about it I I do feel like it's worth mentioning one player in particular who really did impress me in this game and I feel like people are going to pick up on the fact that Jack said he was going to drop him if if he'd started the game which I would have done prior to this game but Rooney I thought played really well in midfield he was he wasn't particularly mobile but I think he did a job he picked out some nice passes and he was quite capable of spreading the play nicely yeah can I can I come on to Rooney in just a just a feel, moment feel free yeah. to I wanted uh, to bail myself out because I know that we are known as an anti-Rooney yeah. podcast I feel like I've got lots to say on Rooney and I'll save it I will tease the listeners and save it for a moment uh, I thought you were actually going to go in way of saying that Aaron Ramsey had a good game I thought Aaron Ramsey was everywhere for a uh, for, for I mean, Wales it's, it's, it's hard not to notice him with his new yeah. glowing maybe hair maybe it is that maybe it is that the fact he's got a light bulb on his head but um, no I did think he was really good I thought he worked England quite hard him and Joel in the middle um, it was a shame that Joe Ludley had to go off he's obviously fought really hard to get back into the team to go off with the injury is uh, it's going to be disappointing it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if he plays again now uh, you almost suspect not if he's going to come off the game in the, in the manner in which he did um, but I thought I thought Wales early especially caused us a few issues we took control of the game for the majority I think we had 70 possession at the end of the game and at half time Jack we go in 1-0 down and I think everybody's thinking make changes but everyone is also thinking he ain't going to make changes I, I I was talking to a colleague and I was sat there going I, I really want Roy Hodgson to just snap I want him at half time to go right we're changing everything I'm forgetting everything I've learned you know like you have that revolutionary Joe, Joe moment in the changing Joe, room Joe Hart comes out in a regular England shirt he's not wearing the goalkeeper <laughs> <laughs> that have been good. But I, I, I was like, I, just, I really hope he changes some gear because this game is screaming out for some changes. And I hope, in some mm. ways, 
the amount of stuff that's been said in the press about Hodgson is going to almost force him and make him feel like he has to make changes in this yeah. game. Do you know what was an amazing moment, Jack? Because you were watching this at the pub, so I don't know if you, you were catching on to this bit, right? But there was a lot of talk that, oh, Daniel Sturridge is coming on. Oh, oh, yeah, is he? Oh, that'll be good. And then you see Daniel Sturridge walk up those stairs at the ground, and he pops up, and then he's like, oh, yeah, there he is, look, there he is, he's coming on. And everyone's going, oh, he's brought on Sturridge, he's made a change, I can't believe he's done it at half time. Then everyone sort of calms down for about three seconds, and all of a sudden, there's Jamie Vardy! And everyone's getting really excited, because Vardy's behind him as well. Shirt off, well, not shirt off, like, he's got his training top off, and then you know that Kane, uh, Kane's gone off, Sterling's gone off, and Vardy and Sturridge are coming on. They came on, it was like, it was like a dream team when, when I saw that, I was really hoping I'm thinking keep Kane on take off Lallana yeah. and Sterling and just play three strikers but did, the, but did that happen could you see that happen in that, did you, like, I don't know if I've described I, it in I the way that you it saw was it. kind of a bit like that I feel like the public like, oh Sturridge is coming on kind of a bit of a pause it's like oh yeah. he's coming on too oh yeah it was that moment of oh my word I'm, I, really, double as I, said, I really wanted Kane to stay on it just like yeah we'll play Sturridge yeah. on the left Vardy on the right we're just going to boot it up to them and hope I, they uh, do something I think I tweeted at half time just bring Wilshire, Kane, and uh, Wilshire, Wilshire, Vardy, and Sturridge on now. Don't wait. <laughs> and then I thought, he's going to he's gonna wait. But then he put them on, and it was great. Uh, he brought two of them on anyway. That was good enough for me. And they had an impact. It's fair to say they both had an impact. There, the was, there was suddenly was a, a dynamicness. I've, done, I've not been that excited about an England team since we beat Germany 3 2. Well, a lot of my complaints in the Russia game, as was highlighted last time, is that we are, I, I used the sentence, we are the most predictable team at the Euros because you know exactly what we're going to do. Daniel Sturridge and Jamie Vardy changed that very, very quickly. All of a sudden, Wales, who played essentially a fire at the back with three defenders in there, uh, three centre-backs in there, all of a sudden looked at sixes and sevens. They didn't know where we were. They didn't know where we were going to go. We didn't know which sort of delivery was going to come in. They didn't know who was going to shoot, where it was going to come from. And it makes it difficult for teams. At that point, we weren't predictable. We became a team that could cause problems because the other team didn't know what we were going to do. And that is something that does not happen within the England set-up enough. And if we go back and revert back to this predictable style again, that will see us knocked out of the tournament in sort of a really sort of damp squib of, 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 a, of a way. Yeah. I feel like, there's a, on like this, it's a really then, hungry performance as well by the players who came on. They wanted it. Yeah. There was perhaps a few times where Sturridge's blood went to his head and he wanted it a bit too much. But at I least th- you but, but saw know. players trying to make an impact in the game. I feel like for England, especially in the kind of first game and a half, really, players have kind of just been confined to their roles. They've kind of just been told, right, yeah. this is where you're playing, stick there. Well, they would have watched so, that, wouldn't they? They would have so watched the Russia game and, and seen that. You, like you were saying that, but they would have watched, they would have watched the Russia game and thought, I can change this game. And this was their chance to prove it. Yeah, and as, as I was going to say, I feel like England's been quite, I don't want to say disciplined in terms of how the players line up. They're very much pigeonholed into doing a certain role and not roaming elsewhere. Mm. Really love the fact that, you know, Serge was dropping deep, he was winning the ball, he was bringing it from deep areas, he was really trying to have a, an impact on the pitch everywhere. And you weren't entirely sure where exactly he was playing the yeah. spells of this game. He was kind of just floating around Vardy, he was kind of just constantly lurking in Vardy fashion kind of in the six-yard box, which is, of course, how England got their first goal. And I've got to yeah. be honest, when the first goal went in... I didn't so celebrate. I, th- I think most people thought Vardy was offside. I was sat in the pub, everyone should put up and down, I'm sat there going, it's offside. It's, it's offside. offside, yeah. Everyone's getting giddy. I think I actually made my dad, I was like, it's offside. And and he usually like gets up and does a little dance, because, you know, he's, he's midlife crisis and that. Um, got up, does a little dance, and he didn't do it, because I was like so adamant, he's offside. No, no, he's offside. And then it was kind of the, hang on, they're giving it. They're giving it. What? But he's offside, and I was still thinking he's offside. And then they showed the replay, and then you see it hit Ashley Williams' head, and you're like, he's onside. And then you just then you clap in, shout in. Oh, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, we, we at that point, yeah, back in the game, and I dare say it only looked like there was ever going to be one winner. Second half, Wales were really disappointing. They were, and I kind of I, I wanted to see more from Wales. I feel like if this was a knockout game, their approach to the second half was probably quite different as a whole. It seemed yeah. like for Chris Coleman, his general plan was as the game went on and on, we're just going to try and weather the storm. Even even late on in the game, it seemed like you know, in, kind of from the 80th minute onwards, he was kind of quite set. This is how we're going to sell. Let's see if it can last. Whereas yeah. I felt for England, there was kind of a constant evolving in kind of terms of how England were playing. I felt like the, there was a as I, said, I hate to use the word again, but it was a really dynamic performance by England. And as you said, there was only one team that looked like winning. However. As the game went on and on, I'm sat there going, please don't be another Russia. Please don't be another <laughs> Russia. It, it had that vibe to it yeah. where I don't. I feel like as an England fan, you maybe have that one moment every 10 years where you really, you have like a memorable, like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing moment for an England football team. 
I'm really worried that the late goal by Sturridge is that moment against Wales. I'm, well, I'm really hoping there's the more to come. Yeah, I think I think Wales had a couple of opportunities in there, and at that point, you thought, "Oh my word, they might actually yeah. like steal this here." I think I, Bale, I feel like Bale if Bale the Russia game headers. doesn't happen, none of that's even a fact. Like you don't even it doesn't even cross yeah. your mind. That's the worst yeah. thing, perhaps. Um, I don't know. I feel like Gareth Bale's enough of a factor for you still to consider it. But I thought. Wales, I expected so much more. I thought Allen and, and Ramsey would control it more. Obviously, they had Ledley go off, but I still thought that Wales had enough in there to, to cause us more problems. I was I was surprised actually that they went and uh, they didn't play Johnny Williams, who I thought played really well in the first game, and they went with Robson Carnu, who for me didn't really do anything. I mean, there's I've a reason he's unemployed. <laughs> I mean, he did score in the last game. Oh, he thought, scuffed it through the keeper's legs. But I feel like game. it was a bit. I always feel like it was a bit sentimental of of Coleman to say, "Oh yeah, we'll stick him up there," because he didn't cause Kale and Smalling any problems. I don't think the only the only player. I, I well, I say the only player. I mean, Joe Allen, not made Wayne Rooney. Uh, Ramsey worked very very hard, and Bale had a few flashes of where you thought, heck, we, "If he does something here, we're in trouble." But on the whole. I think Wales fans would admit themselves that they didn't play anywhere near as well as they can do. And they made it easy f- for England. I've criticised England for being predictable. I felt like Wales were rather predictable. I felt like they had one line of attack. It was get it to Bale and hope he works something with someone else. I, I was really worried that Wales' is five of the back was going to be just so effective against England. I think the issue for Wales really was was that they kind of set back. They kind of went, come on to us. And I kind of feel like... yeah. It, it kind of played into England's hands in a lot of ways. Well, I feel like Wales' game plan was very much, we're going to counter, we're going to get to Bell, and a moment of brilliance is going to be enough. And I feel so, like for England, it was just, it, it was a cool and composed performance. And it was a very, even as the game went on, there was a weird calmness about the team as a whole. I felt that they seemed fairly relaxed. And yeah, they, d- they didn't look like they were about to bottle it completely, which is very rare for an England team. It, it, they were so sort of like Wales sat back so much and played so defensively that Rodson thought, "Let's just bring on Rashford." Can I, I want to complain about that change. I, I, I think I, it's a good I, change. I, I want to praise him for his first two changes in the game. Although I feel like every man in a pub across England would have wanted those two changes. I don't feel like. Yeah. It, 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 if he, he hadn't done it, there'd be far more. There'd be far more anger if he hadn't done it. So the fact he did do it, we're all. We, I think our shock of him actually doing it is what's sort of getting him him through at that point. I feel like for the the Rashford one, he sat there going, "Right, it's one, it's one one. We need a goal." I mm. brought Rashford in, and no one really expects him to do a lot. And he's a bit of a wonder kid story. If I bring him on and he scores, that's all on me. That's <laughs> that's something that I have won us this game because no one else wanted to take him. Everyone else thinks that's they might, like, as well put, they might as well put Hodgson hat trick at Ma- the end. Ma- you know? Marcus, Ma- get on. Get on yeah. me, me, me. I'm doing my GCSEs, Gaffer. No, no, you're on now. No, he's older than that. A and, levels. Uh, sorry, A levels, A S levels. Fair. I think it would yeah. be technically. Uh, but I, yeah, I thought it was a strange thing. I think we both we both said privately that we thought that privately makes it sound like no one's allowed to hear. Uh, Jack Wilshire should have come on. It was the obvious change for me. Either that or Barkley. I just wanted to see some more energy in the midfield. I felt like I feel like Delhi Ali has got a bit lucky in terms of I feel like he's gone onto the radar as an underperformer yeah. in these first two games. I know someone's going to go, but he was involved in Sturridge's well, I, late I goal. I think he's done all right. I think he's played okay, actually. I, I, I feel like you you want more from him, and I think actually perhaps Delhi Ali's performances are one of the reasons why Kane has been so isolated when he's played. I feel like Kane and Delhi Ali are two players who play really well one, one off one another at club level, and when one of them isn't quite on their game and isn't getting enough of the ball it really impacts the other one's performance and I think that's you, been shown in the last kind of two England games do you feel like those two and perhaps Sterling as well play far better on a break their, their decision making on a breakaway is far smarter than when they're in possession and controlling a game I, f- I feel like I've seen lots of goals this season for Tottenham and Sterling's best bits have often come from when he's breaking through he's got a couple of options and he picks the right ball now you might think actually Sterling's final product isn't that good but I, I don't necessarily agree with that I think actually Sterling's product is good if he's given the time and the space more importantly to to penetrate teams and you might think well yeah there's lots of players that do that well but Raheem Sterling is certainly one of those he's a player that thrives on space he's not getting it there's a strong argument to say that Kane hasn't had anywhere near enough and neither is Deli Alli and when that's not happening Jack we need players to come on and move and I think that's the difference between the changes that Vardy came on and although he wasn't involved in the game a lot and apart from his goal didn't do a great deal he's constantly making Ashley Williams think where is Jamie Vardy where is he who's got him have you got him I haven't got him where is he and then at that point you've got Sturridge just sort of flowing around all over the place he was like a kid in a park he yeah, you know. but, but but the two two boys that come on and we touched on it before they love playing football they love getting involved they they knew that they had something to prove and they did and the goal the storage's goal 
I was I was all over. I was jumping around. I was shouting. I was screaming. I, I was Hennessy, doing the dance. Hennessy should do a little bit better at his near post. I feel like no, it was unstoppable. I was doing the dance, Jack. That's how good it was. I mean, I, I for a second I was worried Storage wasn't going to do the dance. He kind of got a dance. bit carried away. I've scored in the Euros. I've scored in the Euros. It's like oh, he's going. He's going. To, what's he doing? Do the dance. I mean, do the dance. How how terrifying during that celebration. I mean, I was going mental, and then all of a sudden you sort of look back at the screen, wanted to see a replay. Wayne Rooney's face is there. And he's giving it a right stare down the camera. He actually appeared from nowhere. I've watched it about three or four times. <laughs> just jumps in from the bottom of the frame. The other thing I enjoyed was the fact Gary Neville was on top of the pylon. Like I was disappointed not to see Roy there, you know, running mm. down to the corner flag. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. I don't know why Rooney did that. I mean, I, th- I guess he was just so excited. He wanted it, it to like, be about him. But he did it, and then he threw it away. He was like, "Give me that camera." Go away, camera. It was very strange. It was, he didn't respect the equipment. And for those that have been watching my Twitter profile, like like Hawks, you'll know that. I don't know. I'm, I've not mentioned this on the show at all, Jack. Is it worth bringing up? Go for it. Well, I'm I'm, a, I'm I am the pioneer of the respect the equipment campaign. Something that started on my uh, YouTube channel when footballers hit the post in the bar, but it's become ever more prevalent that footballers in general are not respecting the equipment whether it be hitting the bar and um, there was an incident recently that a, a flag was a pulled a flag was murdered brutally. was pulled from its its home jack and uh, was thrown to the side uh, yesterday Dimitri Payet he drop kicked a corner flag now and uh, UEFA you've been under criticism for not doing enough about fun violence there's bigger issues at hand and um, Carl Walker kicked a hoarding as well yeah, we're we're seeing equipment all over the place be damaged. Be um, it, it's basically it's just a la- I mean, it quite literally is a lack of respect for the equipment. And if you see it uh, for the fans, listeners, do let me know either on the for the fans Twitter or my own Twitter, and and let me know of this so I can report it. Um, and a big shout out actually to a recent ambassador, Jack Daniel Storage. I announced today is an ambassador. If you check the celebration, check the pictures, he does try and get the corner flag involved in the England celebration. Um, uh, almost in a protective manner because he knows what's been going on so I'd like to formally announce on the show as well as Twitter earlier on that Daniel Sturridge is the first ambassador uh, for, as a, from a professional football standpoint to be part of the Respect the Equipment campaign thank you I don't know how to follow that up really business. <laughs> basically Jack we're going to win the tournament it's, it's all set now I mean, the, we've won is, the, the game. bizarre thing is we're top of the group now and we've gone from yeah. basically being in a situation where two points you're thinking oh my gosh so much rides on that last game it's going to be a typical England bottle job <laughs> so now you look well, at it and you go we've got four points that's probably third in the group guaranteed now let's touch on it briefly then uh, Slovakia beat Russia we didn't talk about group B uh, or the other game in group B in the other show Slovakia beat Russia I thought Russia again not very good just be honest I, I thought Russia defensively were really poor you know how kind of Slovakia are going to play you know Hamsik's going to be involved you know Vice is going to be in, you know those are the two players in that team that really they have the ability to change the game and twice they allowed and showed the players onto their stronger foots and twice it was very too very similar goals, really. It was like yeah. deja vu to well, uh, especially Ham Six. Ham Six goals. Oh. It looked like some kind of FIFA. You know, you go for the short yeah. corner and then a player just finesses it in off the post. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful finish. Um, he's the he's the danger man, isn't he? Going into this final game for England, he is the only kind of guy. And having seen how we dealt with one sort of star-studded player, you, there's an argument to say Ham Six not at Bale's level, but still a very, very competent footballer. And he's the man we're going to have to be aware of because he makes things tick. In that Slovakia side, he is going to be the problem, and uh, he must be stopped. Jack, how do we stop him? Who stops him? What's the plan? Um, Dyer, good. stick Dyer on him. Just hope that works. But perhaps. I mean, I I was actually going to suggest we bring on Nathaniel Klein and man mark him, or James <laughs> Milner, and go right Milner Klein. If he gets through, hack yeah. him down. We, it doesn't yeah. matter if you get some off because you're probably not going to play in the rest of the tournament. Do you know what? I've just I've just realised I've promised something before and not done it, so I need to do it now. I'm going to sit here and await whatever okay. it is. Uh, earlier in the season for the Premier League season, Jack, we did Dear Brendan for when Liverpool weren't particularly good. Um, there's a new Dear someone. <clears throat> Let me begin. Dear Wayne, quick apology um, throughout the recent tournaments where, frankly, if, actually, you've not been good enough. You've been poor. Your goal scoring has not been up to scratch. Your performances haven't been good enough, um, and I've been very critical of your performances. I think you've been piss poor, frankly, not living up to the standard that you set yourself, Wayne. Okay, you burst onto England scene, scored plenty of goals. You're a record goal scorer. You haven't been playing like him for the last few years, though, Wayne. You're right, you've scraped goals against San Marino and other piss poor nations. No offence, but today, or whenever you listen to this, against Wales, the match against Wales, in my opinion, Wayne, you are a man of the match, and you ran the show, and I was very impressed. And I just want to say, from from me. 
and all the England fans and all the members of the Respect the Equipment campaign. Do you want to talk about that again? So no, no. Okay. No. Um, we are very grateful for what you did in that game, and I thought you were excellent. And do that more. So uh, not only is it a dear Wayne Jack, it's a thank you Wayne. In fact, I'm going to tweet hashtag thank you Wayne. Carry on. Okay. Well, look, I I kind of want to I want to say I'm going to echo your sentiments, but I feel like you've gone on a, a slightly more emotional tangent than I wanted yeah. to pursue myself. I just want him to know I, I mean it, Jack. I feel like for Wayne Rooney, he's been a bit of an enigma in this team. No one's quite known where he's going to fit into the England side. With a lot of strikers coming into form, with the likes of Vardy, Kane, Sturridge, really fighting for those positions. I I. Think I, I after the first game, I was really worried that the reason Wayne Rooney was playing in centre mid was because Roy felt like he had to play him and he couldn't possibly justify playing him ahead of you know any of those other strikers. Yeah. And we've seen him play centre mid before when he's meant to be playing up front. It was something that happened in the World Cup all the time where Wayne Rooney would chase back and he, he's shown that he does have this defensive work ethic. And I've been very doubtful of his capabilities in centre mid. I feel like he can pass the ball well. But my real mm. kind of concern was, can he stay switched on? Can he, you know, run the show from centre mid, both going forward and going backwards? And yes, in this game, he hasn't been tested too much going backwards. But so much of the play came through him. His passing was really on point. It's an element of his game which I feel like perhaps I've underestimated, as have other people, because, you know, when you strike, you don't traditionally know them for their ability to spread the play. Mm. My concern is, can he put up this level of performance against a team who really are going to give us a harder battle in the midfield? That's not to say Wales haven't tried to give us a battle in the midfield. You talked about Joe Allen and Ramsey. I feel like they had two fairly strong games. But I feel like against a team who aren't going to be willing to surrender possession as Wales were against England, is Wayne Rooney, when you don't have the ball, just going to be a passenger? Or can you really kind of display and kind of stamp across I guess his defensive capabilities as a midfielder and that for me is a big question that remains to be asked particularly when you've got Deli Ali, who seems firmly kind of fixed in the squad I think he might get dropped but with Deli Ali playing a play he's very good going forward there's a big emphasis on Wayne Rooney not to necessarily be a box-to-box -box midfielder but certainly a player who contributes both going forward and going backwards and kind of operate operates as a player really a lot of the play is going to go through yeah, I think if he carries on playing at a high level, we'll be fine. I, I think you're right that when we play against teams, I mean, say we come up against a Germany or a Spain or an Italy, I think that Rooney is suddenly a bit of a, I don't want to say a target for those teams, but you can see from the way, the, the only criticism I've got from Rooney from this game is that occasionally we'd have Ali and uh, a striker pushed on forward. We'd have Lalana up there as well. Maybe it was Sterling in the first half, Storage and Vardy in the second. Already in the box, right? And then Rooney would play that beautiful ball out to Carl Walker, which he did plenty of times in, in the game today. And then he'd run into the box as well. And I can't help but think, just sit off a little bit. Just like give yourself a little bit more room, Wayne. Because you're, you're crowding it so much so that it comes out. And then we're doing that kind of thing you don't like, in where we're probing again. I feel, I feel yeah, was lethal. I feel like sometimes we lack a killer pass. I feel like that was something perhaps in the Wales game. There wasn't many chances. Yeah. We didn't play over the top a lot, do we? We've not done that at all. This there, there was perhaps that one chance on the break where Wales committed a few men forward, you know, and there was the the Sterling miss. But with the exception of that, there's really not been too many opportunities I can think of in this game where there's been a ball that's kind of been pinged across, you know, the 18-yard box from one side yeah. to the other. It's been a lot of kind of build the play up slowly, try and get a cross in, or try and force our way in through a surging run down the middle. Yeah. As I well, said, can I, just, can I just quickly say on that? Actually, I think as the tournament goes on, we will see England do that more. I think actually, when you look at the games that England have played in friendlies and in competitive matches, when we've played good teams. England have been forced to sit back and defend a little bit, and as long as they know that that's their job and they're not forced in these, into these uncomfortable attacking situations where we probe and probe and probe and get nothing done, then I think we can be quite explosive and, and really show what. Like how are we going to play against the better sides? Like I'm actually quite excited to see us play against a Spain or a, or an Italy or someone like that because I think we'll have to adapt, and I think Roy's ready for us to adapt. That's one one sort of pro point I've got about Hodgson is that he's kind of been preparing for the better teams, and with players like Vardy and Sturridge and, and even Sterling like that, and with Rooney playing deeper and be, having the ability to ping the ball over the top. I think we've got a bit of potential there against those better teams. So I'm, I'm hoping, the kind of point I'm making is that I'm hoping throughout this tournament, as we go on, we'll see England adapt and have more opportunities to break and, and counter-attack teams, because I think it can be a strength of ours. Spe speaking of kind of Roy learning lessons, perhaps, and trying to change things, I really hope this game acts as a wake-up call. I think one of the big criticisms of Roy Hodgson... Do you Hodgson, think it will? Do you think it will? I hope so. I feel like a big criticism of Roy Hodgson, particularly at the last World Cup, particularly you know in the opening game here in the Euros was he didn't make those cutthroat decisions soon enough. In fact, in some games, he just didn't make them at all. I really hope that he looks at this game and goes, 
huh, I, I, you know, I changed the game. I changed our shape willingly at halftime, and it's worked. And that will make him more brave, I guess, to try it again. And to be honest, I'd rather an England side, you know, tries to r- risk it perhaps a little bit, tries to change their system when they're behind, than kind of just mm. sits and kind of just decides, well, this is how we're going to play. We're going to stick by it and hope it works. Because I feel like yeah. there's an inevitability about games like that. And I think if you look particularly at, obviously, the World Cup last year, or not last year, four, uh, two years ago, where, of course, ourselves and Italy got knocked out in the group stage, that was just one of the massive criticisms was this unwillingness to change the game the Costa Rica game for me stands out as a perhaps the pinnacle example of that yeah and I feel like we've seen here a different Roy I said I said on Twitter I didn't I wasn't sure if it was Roy calling the shots this game because it just <laughs> it looked like it was the kind of decisions you wanted from someone at, at the pub you know as I said bringing on Rooney and storage it's not decisions that you'd associate with Roy Hodgson or indeed a lot of managers I feel like in his yeah. position playing for England and I'm kind of interested to see if this kind of more daring, risky Roy is going to risky be some, Roy. is going to be something that emerges more Shall as the we, tournament goes oh, on. Can we please make risky Roy a hashtag? I mean, if you've got to this point in the podcast, please leave the comment on the YouTube channel of hashtag risky Roy. If you're listening on iTunes, tweet us hashtag iTunes so we know you're coming from there and hashtag risky Roy. I think from now on. We need to make this a thing. Like depending on if he's wearing a nice shirt, if he's wearing you know a fancy shirt. Um. I'll make one more point. I'm sorry, Wales fans, if you don't feel like we've talked about you enough in this game. Um, I will say that I think your chances of going through are still pretty good. You play Russia. So, look forward to that. They they, they might not even be in the tournament at that point. So, you know, enjoy it. Um, Just briefly then, final thoughts. This is going to be probably the most shocking thing we've said over the two shows we've recorded this evening, Jack. Um, Martin Keogh made a good point. <clears throat> Whoa! Can I, I need to sit down. I'm already Sorry? sat down. I'm sitting down again. I need to get up and sit. One sec. T- <laughs> right. We'll, I'm, sa- we'll I'm back in my seat. Right. Excellent. Uh, um, can you repeat that, please? I did. Yeah. Martin Keown made a good point. He said, "I think he said, like, and I quote: uh, England fans would rather see a manager that was uh, proactive rather than reactive." And I think, though, we want Roy to be a bit more risky and to and to make braver decisions. I would hope he does that before the match begins and not shit himself at half time and make two changes and that's my only qualm that we might continue to go in this reign of oh well, I've got it all figured out now and actually you've not thought about it enough and we get found out by smarter managers so we'll have to wait and see and I think that brings us to the end though Jack I think that's been quite a comprehensive England chat and you can see listeners now uh, why we've left it to this yeah. <laughs> to do a single well, show we, on we it we should say in the obviously the other side of the group Slovakia beat Russia they have a good chance to go through. It actually makes the game against England a little bit more interesting, I think. Yeah, whichever team wins will uh, will guarantee themselves qualification. So, you know, I think England are all pretty much there. Roy even said in his post-match, well, you know, it's, it'd be nice to look forward to the knockout stage this year. I'm thinking, Roy, slow down, big boy. Uh, hold on, <laughs> let's let's get there first. Um, right then, that does bring us to the end. I think we were a lot more positive than we were last time we spoke at England. Well, we were, yeah. I feel like some people thought we were perhaps being a bit too reactive. I think... Just because I care, we, as, that's as, all it is. As we talked about, it... it it was a frustrating performance and I feel like this was a game that I feel like for me as a doubter of Roy Hodgson as a doubter of Rooney has kind of maybe knocked me down a peg and I'm glad for that that's what I want to yeah. see from England as I as I said earlier on you know I feel like once every 10 years we have an England moment to remember and I really hope that this goal against Wales isn't going to be that moment I hope there's yeah. more to come in this competition because yeah. I feel like we're, we're overdue it a bit really without sounding yeah. too in- in- uh, what's called entitled I think a lot of people thought we. Well, like, I think I got, I got quite a lot of stick, Jack, for being quite of quite negative. I don't want to be negative. Like I just I, I want like I care so much because I can see the problems and I feel like I'm not the only person. Quite a lot of people agreed with like my little rant last episode. Um, I just I just care that we can be better and I want us to be better and I don't want us to be constrained by silly things like managers. I, I, so, ca- uh, I kind of hope we're going to play a four three three against Slovakia. So whoever we get in the knockout round has no idea what we're going to play. Play <laughs> yeah, the same I'm eleven goodness. again. Mind play three games. at the back. Three at the, three at the back. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> uh, that brings us to the end. Then uh, for the fans show dot com for any more things. Hashtag risky Roy. Don't forget. Get it in the comment section uh, or on the Twitter at for the fans show over there uh, and iTunes again at for the fans show. Thank you for your ratings and your comments about the show. 
show. We do appreciate it. And we'll bring out another show, I believe, we've planned for Sunday, Jack. Yeah, that's the plan. And, of course, England won't play on the Monday, so there'll probably be a Monday show as well. Ah, oh, we're all over it. Uh, right, that does bring us to the end. Thank you for joining me, Jack. No worries. I mean, someone's going to be here in Kino's absence. Or are you <laughs> shouting it? to yeah. yourself for an well, hour hopefully, we, hopefully we, I mean I could have done that believe me uh, last last week I could have anyway uh, Keenan will be back next time and we love with care from me Dr Benji better known as Ben I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going with Ben Jack I think it's my okay. name in it yeah we love with care from Ben doesn't sound like uh, I'll see you again very soon for the time show out <laughs>